Welcome to the Sinta Center in Cincinnati. Just over five and a half minutes in, Xavier leads Providence 13 to seven. Alongside Steve Lapis, I'm Andrew Catalan, and Lap, let's take a look at the U.S. Army keys to the game. Well, Providence has to limit turnovers and control the glass. Xavier scoring the break. They love to run the third ru best running team in the country and contain Joshua Doro, who's been on fire lately. Providence just called a timeout because Xavier is currently on a 13 to four run. The Musketeers are three of four from deep as Corey Floyd with an acrobatic lay-in. Well, the one thing that Providence has not done a good job with so far is dealing with these handoffs. They have lost guys on the handoff and given up a bunch of easy shots. Providence struggling from the outside early in this one. They're one of six from deep. Claude over to McKnight in the corner. That one's no good. The rebound is rejected by Carter. Devin Carter gets a piece of the shot by Dalen Swain. Carter end to end. Over to Gaines for three. And the rebound to Usman. They need Gaines because, oh, what a great pass. And Oliveri with the finish. And that's who Kim English told us about before the game, that their transition defense, he's really upset at his team, because their transition defense the first time around at Providence was terrible. And he emphasized that because Xavier loves to run. And that time really was Devin Carter jogging back. And it doesn't have to be his man. You got to get look at Devin Carter, number 22. He is jogging back. He should have been sprinting back, and normally that kid plays really hard, no doubt. And Ticket Gaines commits the foul, so Quincy Oliveri a chance at a three-point play. These two teams met January 13th in Providence, and Xavier won by 20. Friars only have two losses at home this year, and one was to the Xavier team. And in that game, fast break points, 24 to 7 in favor of the Musketeers. And as Coach Lapis just pointed out, Kim English met with us pregame and said, we have to do better in transition. They got exposed that last time down the floor. Carter bounces to Oduro, had it knocked away in a turnover. That's, he's had a couple knocked away like that. Claude all the way, left hand no, and out of bounds. It'll be Providence basketball. Kim English's team has won two in a row, while Sean Miller's club has had the last week off. And Coach Miller telling us that the Xavier team really needed that week off. Gave him a lot of rest. Tried to get him rejuvenated for this game tonight as Oduro hits from the outside. Not his strength, but he can make those, and he's made some this year. Here's Claude from the free throw line. Knocks it down. And that's what Desmond Claude does. He was smart. He's a 22% three-point shooter, so he didn't shoot the three. He gave the shot fake, was able to get it to 14 feet and make that shot. Good play, Desmond Claude going to his strengths. And he kind of needed that one lap. He was 0 for 4 to start the game and 3 for 8 a week ago. Carter dribbling through traffic right over to Oduro again. Defended by Usman, who came off the bench tonight for Sean Miller. Oduro, oh, tough too. I tell you, he's a good player. When I saw him last month, the first time I had Providence, I was like, boy, this kid can really play. Claude left alone. Carter the rebound. Providence flying the other way. Carter to three. Usman steps into a two. How about it? That was big for him because he really struggled against Seton Hall. He didn't start this game. His last three games, he has scored a total of five points. An early deuce here tonight. And another Providence turnover. McKnight the other way. Blocked by Pierre. Usman corrals it to Oliveri. Back to Usman. Right now, Providence is having trouble handling the, de the defense of Xavier. Xavier looks like a team that has had the last week off. Fresh legs, they're flying all over the court. Pierre out to Carter. Extra pass to the corner. Duall, air ball is a three. 
A long rebound out to Claude, and he stepped out of bounds. It will be Providence basketball when we come back. For those of you watching our free streaming coverage, it will conclude after the commercial break, but we'll continue on CBS Sports Network. are back with a look at the standings in the Big East Conference. Providence in a tie for fifth with Villanova. Xavier enters in seventh place. And welcome courtside everyone with former Villanova coach Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. A good one so far here tonight at the Cintas Center. And a big game for both teams. Our Jerry Palm does not have either one in the tournament field right now, but opportunity lies ahead. Well, there's no doubt about it. Providence is closer to being in than Xavier is, but neither one of them is out of it because not only what they've done, four quad one wins for Providence, only two for Xavier, but Xavier has number one strength of schedule. So everybody has something going for it, and there's still quality wins out there besides the Big East tournament. So neither one of these teams is dead yet. Providence a little bit better off than Xavier is right now. Sean Miller's Musketeers are on a 16 to seven run right now. Miller telling us pregame how much the week off has helped his team get some fresh legs. And they look at early lap already in fast break points, outscoring Kim English and the Friars 10 to two. And that's what Kim English was worried about in the first game that Xavier beat Providence at Providence, which is never easy to do, beat him by 20. They had 24 fast break points in that game and 17 points off turnover. Right now, this looks like they are flipping the script on them. They're doing it to them again. A carbon copy. Carbon copy. Turner with the left hand won't go. Whoa. Devin Carter is 0 for 7 to open up this game. The Big East. Leading scorer at 19 points or better, but he's getting it done on the de defensive end. I mean, he's up there for the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year Award. He's amongst the finalists in that regard. Tremendous defender. And when you average eight and a half rebounds a game and you're a 6'3 guard, you're doing something. Here's Carter, draws the contact, and the bucket is good. His first field goal of the night. You know what I love about him, Andrew? We saw him last year, but the way he's improved, become a 41% three-point shooter, that wasn't what he did that great last year. The first two years for Carter, including his one at South Carolina, he had a total of 51 three-pointers. He has 66 this year. Averages better than two and a half made threes per game, which is third best in the Big East. And he's made some deep, deep threes this year that I've seen. The reigning Big East Player of the Week finishes off the three-point play. Put it this way, he's a locked first-team All-Big East player. The question is, can he be Player of the Year? I'm going to think now he's second or third. I think Tyler Pollock probably has the edge. Tristan Newton, I think those two guys have the edge right now because their teams are up there. How much do you think finishing towards the top of the standings factors in? It factors in, there's no doubt. It has. I mean, Kadari Richmond from Seton Hall, he was having a player of the year type season too. All right, they're, they're in fourth place. So you got to give it, if your team wins and you're the best player, a lot of times that's how it goes. Yeah. Five-point game midway through the first half. Claude for three. Yes. Now that's a bonus. Well, a bonus. His last nine games, he shot 12% from deep. So yes, a bonus fits. <laughs> Carter trying to answer. And the rebound tipped around and grabbed by Namiksha. Xavier is shooting four of seven from the outside to open up here in the first half. Claude in the paint, sends it out to the perimeter. Xavier trying to stop a two-game losing streak. Green with the shot clock at five. Over to Johnny, rejected. Already five blocks in the first half for the Friars. They average four and a half per game. Trey Green commits the foul. Yeah, ticket gains there with the block. Yeah. 
Well, this Providence team is, Josh Duro said, defense is their calling card. Third in the Big East in points per game allowed, and second in both field goal percentage defense and three-point percentage defense. Yeah, but they're one of the top defensive teams in the country. As we said before, 16 according to Ken Palm, the defensive efficiency. That's pretty good. Oduro fighting down low, off glass for two. He has a great touch. Very poised on the block. Last three games, he's averaging 29 points and seven rebounds per game. What him and Carter have been doing is, they're, they're as good a one-two punch as you're gonna find in the entire nation. Green for three. Amicia had it, lost it, a fight for it, and a tie-up with the possession arrow favoring the Friars. You're going to see Oduro here. He's got a smaller guy on him. Then he uses the pump fake when the big guys come. And just a nice, soft touch. Seven points, five rebounds already for Josh Oduro. The transfer from George Mason played for Kim English there. Talk to Kim English about the transition for Oduro to the Big East from playing at George Mason. He said, I don't think it's a factor with older players, like a senior here, a super senior. More of a, a factor for some younger players. Barron's three, no good. Floyd had it, lost it, out of bounds. Yes, it is Xavier Ball. When we come back, 7.55 to go in the first. It's a six-point game on CBS Sports Network. He's in here at the Sinta Center overall. He signed a two-year extension back in October through 2029. A look at these seven coaches who are in their second stint at the same school. Yeah, that's a... Uh... An interesting list, no doubt about it. He has Dad Modest been one year at Butler at the start of his career. So far in this one, Xavier with 10 assists on 10 made field goals. And that, that's why they're one of the national leaders in assists also, number 26 in the country. This, this team passes the ball, it's what they do. They don't take a lot of threes. They're four out of eight from the three-point line right now. Providence is two for 12 from the three-point line. That's the, one of the biggest differences in the game right now. And Devin Carter, who's one for nine from the floor, is on the bench right now for the Friars. And now Providence goes zone, which is a good idea because they were getting beat off the dribble a little bit, too. And it's like a matchup. Now they go man to man out of it, and they lost him. Oliveri gets the roll. You know, the one guy you can't lose is Oliveri. Nice. So Xavier continues to be red hot from the outside. Point lead with 7.15 to go. Largest lead of the night for the Musketeers, and a whistle and a foul is called inside. All right, here they are trying to match up here. They get now. I want you to stop. We stop. I want you to find Oliveri. He's in the corner here, and they lose him. Nothing got to lose, second in the Big East in scoring, averaging 19.1 points per game and 44% from deep. Foul was on Usman of Xavier. Carter right back in the game to the corner and Floyd for three. It's good, a big one for the Friars who have struggled from the outside. Tonight, Floyd was 13 for 61 from deep this year. Compared to last year, he was 13 for 31 from the outside. Yes, much improved in that regard. Obviously, getting the more minutes makes a big difference in terms of your confidence. First Xavier turnover of the evening. One thing about Providence. If they can get that third guy to score on a regular basis besides Oduro and Carter, now they've got some. Because what they lost to Bryce Hopkins was a lot. Carter for three. It's good. Wow, that's a tough shot. What a shot by Devin Carter. Now look at that. Look how he was playing, and he didn't bother him not one bit, Andrew. 
to back turnovers by the Musketeers. And a whistle and a foul. I mean, here's a guy that's one for nine. <laughs> and he shot that three as if he'd made like five in a row. Here it is. He does a little reverse dribble that mean lost Desmond Claude completely. Swain commits his second foul for Xavier. There goes Carter again. Oduro baseline on Usman. Trying to go around him. Good defense by the big man. Shot clock down to seven. Pierre goes baseline, but missed it. Yeah, he, explosive move, but he could not finish. Yeah, he had Usman on him, and he thought he was going to take him, and he did take him, just couldn't make the layup. Usman draws the foul. I'd say so far, Sean Miller's move to have Usman come off the bench, he's been very much a positive so far in this game. There's Ticket Gaines wearing a mask for the second consecutive game. He hit his head against St. John's last week, needed some stitches, and he's also protecting his nose. Takes a little while to get used to that. He only had two points the first time he wore it, in Saturday's win over to Paul. One more for Abu Usman. The freshman Garway Dual brings the ball up the floor. Providence trying to pick up its fifth quad one victory of the year. That was much better defense that time by Cloyd. Duall all the way, high arcing shot, no good. Usman the rebound, and Oliveri flies up ahead. McKnight had it poked away. Duall did a very good job of fighting over that handoff that time. Games, and a foul is called. So Providence starting to pick up its pace a little bit here over the last few minutes. Yeah, trying to get themselves some easy baskets, which King, Kim English told us about their ticket gains running the floor. Desmond Claude commits the foul, sending Gaines to the free throw line. Providence now 4 of 4 from the line. Well, Friday night, 8 Eastern, meet us on the ice. Good one in the top 20 as 13th ranked Western Michigan takes on number 15, St. Cloud State. We'll see you Friday at 8 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Xavier led by as many as nine here in the first half, and a foul is called against the Musketeers. Yeah, Usman on the, on the screen of Devin Carter. That's his second. He took it down there. You see right here, that you can't move. You gotta be still. Why do you do that little lead to foul? You cannot move. I don't care how small the move it is, you can't move and get hit. And Sean Miller arguing the call. Just got a tee. Wow. Roger Ayers called him for a technical foul. Disbelief as Carter hits the first free throw. Wow. I don't know what happened. I mean, Roger Ayers is one of the best officials there is. And Sean, though, looks like he doesn't. A lot of times you understand when you get one. You know what I mean? It's almost like he's saying I was talking to somebody else. Well, but that has happened. Cost him a point. It's a 9-1 run 
for the Providence Friars, and they're within one with five minutes to go. Carter looks at the shot clock. It's at nine. Now he thinks about a three. Cross-court pass, dangerous. Good defense by Oliveri. Yeah, he probably should have tried to make a move and get to the basket. And there's nobody who, who, whose hands you'd rather have the ball in with the shot clock winding down. Hachi Enze, who played so well against Seton Hall last week, is into the game for the first time. And a tough pass there, knocked out by Swain. <laughs> Fans don't like the foul totals so far as Xavier has committed twice as many as the Friars. You see Davion McKnight really trying to force Pierre to the sideline, but not a good job. You know, it's one thing to force sideline, it's another thing to just open up the door for him to go to the basket. An 11 to 1 run, and Providence takes the lead. And a foul inside. And that will go against the Friars. Ticket gains with the foul. That's his second. You're going to see Davion McKnight. He's forcing sideline there, but that's not. Then he just opens the door and lets him get to the basket. Corey Floyd hops off the bench for Kim English. And Gaines with the two fouls exits. Very rainbow, no good. Carter with the big rebound, lost it going to the ground, but a foul is called against Oliveri, and this crowd is furious. Timeout on the floor. Well, Providence on a roll right now. They were down pretty good. Jaden Pierre with the layup there. They are now up one on Xavier. Providence leads by one. Tomorrow night, 7 Eastern, we bring you more hoops. Starting with a clash in the CAA as Drexel takes on Hofstra. Then it's Sam Houston at New Mexico State. And the nightcap, Loyola Marymount at Santa Clara. That's all tomorrow right here on CBS Sports Network. We look at the top seven in the CAA, and this is a battle of three against four tomorrow night. Meanwhile, in this one here, Xavier led by as many as nine, but Providence has regained the lead. Sean Miller called for a technical foul. Part of an 11 to one run for the Friars. And here you are, Providence. Your best player is two for 10. You're on the road in a really tough place. It's a tough place to play. And you're up one. Carter's two for ten, but he already has nine points, six rebounds, three assists, and three blocks. No, this guy is one of the great stat sheet stuffers in America. He leads the team in points, rebounds, steals, assists, and he's second in blocks. I mean, to lead a team in almost five categories is ridiculous. Big two there for the Musketeers. Tell you what, Lap, at the first media timeout, it was 10-2 in fast break points for Xavier. Now here we are late in the half, it's 10-4. They have not scored on the break since. And Kim English went nuts when they scored that layup to make it 10 fast break points, and they haven't gotten one since. McKnight with the bucket to put Xavier into a tie, a scramble near midcourt. Oduro scoops it up over to Floyd, and a shot clock violation. You know, what a great job by Josh Oduro to run there to be an outlet for the guy on the floor. I mean, that was just a really smart basketball play. When you see something like that, it's a little thing, but you know, you, when you coach, you notice those little things. He ran over there to be the outlet. They got the ball to him, just ran out of time with the shot clock. Five turnovers for the Friars.
Back tight. Oh, Alavari's free. What a look from Davion McKnight, who's sixth in the Big East in assists per game. Averaging just under five per night. Carter comes to get it. Dribbling through traffic. His step back is short. Tipped right back to him. Now Pierre through the lane. Over to Floyd for three. Long rebound. It's McKnight again. He's been everywhere in this first half. Usman with the two fouls. Oh, ho, he scores! He was trying to pass it, but he'll take it. Was that Usman or Namik? It was Usman. It was it. it yes. It, it, it didn't go off Namik's hand. Ah, uh, that's a good question. I thought it did. Right now, they're counting it to Usman. I don't think Namik should touched it. Barron from the corner, no good. What a rebound with one arm wow. by Floyd, but he missed the follow, and now we're going the other way. So Usman, who had five points in the last three games combined, now has seven points, but let's see. Did anybody touch this? I, I don't think no. so. No. <laughs> you gotta feel good for Usman as we pointed out before things had not been going his way he was benched in the second half against Seton Hall last week did not get the start tonight but he has looked like the player that Xavier saw the first half of the season so far this evening and here's that matchup zone again that they they, they didn't match up a couple of times and lost guys there's another they lost him can't do that Oduro is on the bench with two fouls Oduro and Carter are both on the bench for Providence and a whistle and an issue with the clock so while they sort it out we'll remind you that coming up it's at and at the half Adam Zucker, Wally Zerbiak, Chris Walker, and Gary Parrish will get you caught up with all the action in college basketball, including a tight one in the Big Ten between Illinois and Penn State. It's all coming up on at and at the half. So they adjust the clock. See that the clock here not moving. The shot clock, a little bit of a late start. But we're good to go with a buck 20 to play. Oliveri from the outside. They have struggled with the dribble handoff and getting to a guy like Oliveri and the night a couple of times. It's a 9 0 run for the Musketeers. And these fans on their feet at the Sintas Center with one minute to go in the first half. Castro the flush and that ends the run and look at the here they come on a made basket Oliveri tough pass turns it over Pierre one on two Pierre all the way Not a good decision. No, not at all to take the big man like that Claude trying to keep a handle on it. He does Namicha was wide open oh. and now Barron comes crashing over crashing into him Claude for three and Pierre the rebound, and there's just a half second difference between the game clock and the shot clock, so it looks like Providence will hold for the final shot. A physical first half saw a game of runs with Providence down by as many as nine, coming back to take the lead, but now they trail by five. Five seconds left. Tough pass with three to go. Barron. Into the corner, no shot. a shot clock violation. That's Let's see if they put a half a second back on. Because the horn sounded for the shot clock first. But it looks like they're saying, we're done. Well, Sean Miller's giving Roger Ayers some looks. Yeah, I, that might be half a second yeah. left. Teams are walking off the court. And right now, John Gaffney is going to the scores table. Now, now he's going in the locker room, so that'll do it. 
Interesting. I thought there was a half yeah, second there was. left. We pointed out there was a half second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. But that is how we go into the half. Xavier with 14 assists on 15 made field goals. 38-33, the score at the half in favor of Xavier. Coming up, it's AT&T at the half. Back in Cincinnati at the half, Xavier has a 38-33 lead on Providence. And courtside with Steve Lapis, I'm Andrew Catalan. This is a matchup of the top two scorers in the Big East, Evan Carter against Quincy Oliveri. And so far, number two is leading the way. <laughs> Oliveri has 14. Well, he made three threes in this game, too. He's playing really, really well. And they're not doing a great job of playing him coming off these handoffs. There's one handoff there that he gets a three-point shot on a great defender. Then he runs the floor here and gets a layup. So this kid does a little bit of everything. Again, on a screen, getting caught there. He makes another three, and now he's gonna make one more off a handoff. So they've gotta do a better job. But Oliveri knocking out shots. One of the best three-point shooters in the country. Time now for the first half stats. Powered by Fast Twitch, how Gatorade does energy. 14 assists for Xavier on 15 field goals. You know, that's what they do. They're one of the national leaders in assists per game, and, and how many, what percentage of field goals are assisted. They're great in that category, but the big thing right now is Providence like to shoot threes, four for 17 versus Xavier, six for 12. Xavier only makes seven a game. They have six and a half back. You see Carter coming off 31 Saturday against DePaul, two of 11 so far tonight. Second half underway in a pivotal game for both teams, especially for Providence. This is a quad one opportunity as an offensive foul is called to open up the second. And that's, that's almost the only way you see a charge anymore is if it's on a, a primary defender guarding the ball. As Ticket Gaines is there, he does a good job of jumping into the spot, and Desmond Claude runs him over. Right there, he puts the arm in his chest. That's good defense. Second foul on Claude, the sophomore from New Haven, Connecticut. In three of the last four games between these two teams, both teams have scored at least 80 points. We'll see if we get there tonight. Pierre from the outside won't go. And Gaines saves it, but Barron was out of bounds. Kim English has done a real nice job here for the Friars in his first season, just 35 years old, the youngest among major conference coaches. Oliveri over to Claude, defended by Gaines again. Same matchup last time down the floor. Different in strength for sure. Claude around Gaines and draws the foul this time. And that's the third on ticket and you see sean miller there wanting desmond claude because of his strength and how much more he weighs than ticket game to take him to the basket they don't double him and he ends up drawing the foul so here's claude at the free throw line 78 percent on the season but i will say this and, and De Devin Carter's doing like so many things, but he's gonna have to shoot better if they're gonna win this game. 7 point Musketeers advantage. Xavier has lost two in a row in the Big East for the third time. Each of the previous two times, they won their next game. They have not had a three game win streak or a three game losing streak this season. Oduro, they help out draw the double. From the outside, Barron shot no good, out of bounds. It'll stay with the Friars. Well, according to the net, Xavier has the toughest schedule in the country this season. Number one overall. And Butler, number two, which is a reason why they're also hanging around the bubble right now. And they'll play each other on March 6th right here on CBS Sports Network. Oh, what a tip in there. 
as Ticket goes up and punches it. Brought again, going right back to the free throw line. Desmond Claude does get to the foul line a lot. But you take a look at this out of bounds play. Watch Ticket Gaines. He's going to get a little bit of a brush screen here from the guy taking the ball out of bounds. Xavier fell asleep on that. Nice out of bounds play. His name is Devante, but in high school he was given the nickname Big Ticket, and now he wants to be called Ticket. And who am I to say we're not going to call you Ticket? I love the name. Yeah, it's a great name. It's a great name. That Providence foul is a problem. It was on Oduro, and that's his third. Something to keep an eye out for here. That is a big problem. And now with them down seven, you know, Kim is afraid to take him out. Normally, you try to take him out for a couple of minutes. Because if he gets the fourth, he's going for a long time. Pierre gets position, score it, and the foul. Jaden Pierre, a chance at a three-point play. Yeah, Jaden Pierre turns the corner. And obviously, Chani falling down certainly yeah. helped. Tough one for Chani, the freshman from Slovenia, called for the foul after he tripped. And now the Elizabeth, New Jersey native, Jaden Pierre, with a chance for three. In the first half, McKnight, a nice job for Xavier. Nine points, five assists, and three steals. A lot of clawed so far in the first half. A spinning on Barron, and a foul is called. A lot of banging going on there. First on the freshman from Chicago. So it'll be Davion McKnight to inbound. In the foul trouble, Oduro and Gaines with three. McKnight and Barron commits the foul again. This has been a physical start to the second half. Yeah, well, the first half was pretty physical, too. That's a good point. So two quick fouls on Barron. And now Gaines is going to come out, and Corey Floyd. Junior re-enters. Claude, tough too. That's what he does, and when he gets to his right hand, he's even tougher on that. Good finish. Into double figures, he's got 11. Set play on the out of bounds. Carter does not have the touch, but gets it back, and this time puts it in. He's a tremendous rebounder for this kid. Eight and a half rebounds a game for a guard. McKnight right through the defense. And he's on a made basket, and that's what Kim English is really upset about. On a made basket, they come down and get a flat-out layup. Transition D was Kim English's big key before the game. It let them down here. And a timeout by the Friars. CBS Sports celebrates Black History Month, paying tribute to the triumphs, influence on culture, and legacy of achievements. 17.06 to go, second half. Xavier trying to stop a two-game losing streak. They lead by seven. What needs to change for Providence right now, Lap? Well, they got to get Oduro involved in the game. I mean, he scored seven points early in this game. I'm going to say he hasn't scored since ten minutes of the first half. So they haven't gotten him involved. Get him the ball some because their offense right now is not really going anywhere in the half court. He's out there with three fouls, three minutes into the second. And here's that one, two, two, three quarter court pressure. Yeah, I got to think he's got to get a touch because let's face it, Carter's been struggling. 
and he started out very well They're trying to get him the ball now. A lot of contact down low. Usman and Oduro turn around. Oduro with the bucket. This guy, you got to get him the ball. He's one of the best offensive centers really in the country when it comes to touch. Oliveri, the quick answer. The shot fake, which, you know, if you're a great three-point shooter, it's a great weapon because people are going to jump at you and get out of position all the time. Pierre bounces one, and Oduro able to corral it. Oduro locates Carter. Extra pass to Barron in the corner. It's good. The freshman knocks it out. And you got to give Devin Carter credit because he could have shot that. Barron had a better shot, and Barron was fortunate to knock it out. Usman feeling it tonight. He's got nine points and six rebounds. He's been really good for short ball. Sean has talked about that. Wanting to get one or two of these big guys to play good on a nightly basis. Tonight, Usman is giving it to him. Last three games, Usman was two for 16. Tonight, he's four out of five, but a three by the Friars and Pierre. One thing about this Providence team, they love to shoot threes, and they can heat up quickly from the three-point line. Great back cut. McKnight slipped just a bit coming out of that cut, allowed Pierre to recover. McKnight Whoa. step back. Oh, what a pretty shot. Oh, shot. The transfer from Western Kentucky. Put Xavier back up by six. Pierre, man, he gets to the hole quick. He is a good athlete. He's quick, and that time Xavier did not play the pick and roll well at all. Claude for three, not there. 21% three-point shooter. Not sure Sean wanted that one. Barron again. How about it? Rich Barron back-to-back -back triples. Yeah, he's a freshman. What did Sean Miller tell us before the game about Oduro? He doesn't want him to pick us apart with his passing. Well, that was one of those passes that he threw to the opposite corner, and Barron knocked it out. Barron's got nine points. He averages three per game. Oh, that's and four. foul is called on Oduro. That will be number four. So a big foul against Providence with 14-16 to go, but Rich Barron has come to life. Great pass by Odoro, who's gonna have to sit now, and Barron, the 42% three-point shooter, knocks it out. And we have a one-point game going on here at the Sintas Center. Well, with 14 minutes to go, Josh Oduro picks up his fourth foul. And now the big question for Kim English is how long do you keep him on the bench as you see the fourth foul again? Well, depending on the score, he may have to go for nine or ten minutes. And now, here's the thing. You got three fouls. Nowadays, unless you're the primary defender, you shouldn't even try and take a charge. It's a different way to coach. In the old days, that would have been a charge. In the new days, you got to be there before the guy plants his foot. It's almost impossible for a secondary defender to take a charge nowadays. So if you've got three fouls, you cannot take a charge unless it's on your man when he's got the ball. You saw his reaction. He, he thought he drew the charge. In the old days, last yeah. year was a charge. <laughs> Not anymore. And how many charges do we see anymore? No, you're right. It's a great point. We see no charges anymore. Yeah. That rule has changed that part of the game significantly. And I just thought of it here now because normally you would tell a guy, you got to be careful with three fouls, but you might let him stand in and take a charge. Nowadays, you're getting to try to take a charge. You can't do it. Claude makes the first free throw as Oduro sits. Both these teams red hot to open up the second half. Providence is 8 of 11, Xavier 5 out of 6. Carter and Oliveri, the top two scorers in the Big East, matched up against each other as Floyd drives in. And he draws the foul on Oliveri. Seemed like he was a little late. 
That's the first on Quincy. That could have been a foul right there. Wow. Saying he got the top of his head at the end, and that sends Floyd to the free throw line. Just a 56% free throw shooter. Makes the first. Providence as a team has struggled from the line this year. They are last in the Big East, shooting 70% from the free throw line. Floyd makes them both. And a one-point game inside 14 to go. Floyd bumping with Claude. Claude goes up. Oh, another big two for Desmond Claude. I tell you, he can go one on one and take guys into the post because he's so strong. He's got 15. He had 21 in the first meeting between these two. Now he's back on January 13th, a 20 point Xavier win in Providence. Fans want to travel, they don't get it. I'll tell you, Devin Carter, they've done a great job on him so far. Floyd and Usman with the rebound. His seventh. Oliveri flies in, hangs, missed it. And Carter trying to save it, he does. That should have been a blocking foul there. Carter's dad, Anthony, who's an assistant coach for the Memphis Grizzlies, was in attendance on Saturday to watch his son put up 31 against DePaul, NBA All-Star break. His Gaines misses from the corner. McKnight racing the other way, and he's fouled. And you look up at the shot clock, and it's at 26 seconds. We met with Kim English before the game, and he said, a win for us is if they don't get a shot off, when the clock is at 23. I thought he was kidding. No, he meant seven seconds. If if they hold them without a shot for seven seconds, it's a win. Well, because it probably means they didn't shoot on their first push down the floor, which means now they got to set up. So yeah, that's what he said, no doubt. Well, so they did a good job there. It was at 20, uh, they did not do no, a good they did job. not do a good job. 26 seconds and a free throw coming. And they've gotten a couple of baskets. I mean, they've gotten their fast break. You know, they held them off for a while, but now they have 17 fast break points. That's more than they average. They average about 16, and that's third in the nation. So 17 fast break points, a lot of points. Carter skies high for the rebound. Now he races up ahead. Tipped around and saved by Claude. A turnover by the Friars. There you see the fast break points in the country. Xavier checks in at third overall. All Who's five fine? of those teams. Oh my goodness. Look a different player. Different player. It's unbelievable. He was totally lost against Seton Hall. 11 points and eight rebounds for the transfer from North Texas. The lead up to five. Floyd lost a handle on it. And it will be Xavier Ball when we come back. Providence in a two and a half minute scoring drought. And Abu Usman, who was benched last game and came off the bench tonight, moving closer to a double double. What a night for him. He's got 11 points and eight rebounds. You know, I'm happy for him because he had a really rough night. It was a homecoming for him, too, at Seton Hall. He's from Brooklyn, and he played so poor. He played like nine minutes, and he, Sean Miller didn't bench him tonight because he was mad at him. Bench tonight to kind of maybe give him a different look, let him take some of the pressure off of him, and he has responded really, really well. well. Let's be fair. He was brought here to Xavier to be the backup big guy. They thought Zach Fremantle would be available and Jerome Hunter would be available. Two all-league players. He was forced into this starting role and, and going against some of these centers in the Big East. 
It's not an easy test. He also went against Zach Eady. Yeah. <laughs> He's pretty good, too. I bet. There's Zach Fremantle. Out for the year with a foot injury. And, and you know, uh, Kim English, if this thing gets to 10, he's got to be thinking about Odoro yeah. with the four fouls. Meanwhile, Devin Carter with another double-double, his 10th of the season. He's got 12 points and 10 rebounds. But you got to give them credit. He's 3 for 13 yep. from the field. No doubt. Claude, high-arcing shot, rattles it in. Boy, they have not been able to keep Desmond Claude out of the lane. He looks like he's been living in the lane this whole night. Now, this has not been one of Providence's trademark defensive performances oh. as Castro goes up to get it. Two field goals for Castro, both slam dunks. And Pierre takes it away. Carter with Pierre up ahead. Carter will flush it home. So quick four points for the Friars. Each team with seven turnovers tonight. Claude off the side of the backboard, tipped around, Floyd grabs it. Floyd looking to go coast to coast, wow. he does. I mean, that time, what happened to Xavier's transition team? But you got to stop the ball. Sean Miller to call him timeout. Devin Carter looks a little shaken up. He did not run down the floor on that last trip, and he's grabbing the top of his left knee as he gingerly walks over to the bench. Looks to be okay. Timeout, Xavier. You're leading Providence by one, but take a look at this transition here. What happens? Okay, run it from there, and I'll tell you when to stop it. Stop it right here. This is why Sean Miller was really upset. Desmond Claude is not sprinting. He's got to sprint. Instead, he's jogging, and this guy beats him. Pierre beats him all the way. I mean, Floyd beats him all the way to the basket. That's why Sean Miller spent a good part of that timeout giving it to Desmond Claude. And we told you that Devin Carter was grabbing just above his left knee as he walked off the floor. He's on the bench. You can see the trainer is working on that area right now. We'll see how long it limits him to the bench. So no Aduro or Carter on the floor for the Friars. Wow. McKnight, no, out of bounds. It'll stay with Xavier, 11 on the shot clock. That can't last for too long. Hopefully it's just like a cramp or something. And he did not run down the floor on that last trip. But Kim English was looking at him and he kind of waved him off. Gave one of those looks like, eh, I'll be all right. but. The trainer has stopped working on him, so we'll see if maybe the next whistle they get him back up and in. With yep. the shot clock at four. Here he comes. <laughs> Oliveri's got to get it up quickly. And a foul with one on the shot clock. <laughs> Rich Barron picks up his third. That time Jaden Pierre, he's got to move his feet. He like waved at him. You got to move your feet and get in there a little bit, not let him get into the line. And there's Carter set to come back in. So a quick stint on the bench for the player of the year candidate in the Big East. Well, the good thing for Providence with them only being down one or two points, people draw out. Oliveri now has 18 points for the fifth time in the last six games. He scored at least 18. There's Trey Green on the floor. He's been quiet tonight after he had a career high 23 in the first meeting between these two. Five threes in that game. 63-60 with 9.50 to play. Again, reiterating the importance of this game, specifically in the Big East standings. Friars are eight and seven, Xavier seven and seven. Duall, tough pass, Castro couldn't get there. Yeah, and now Xavier's in the bonus for the rest of the game. Oliveri, open look. Oh, I'm surprised they didn't get Uzma. He like he put somebody in there. Oliveri again. And this time, Castro with the rebound. 
Castro's provided a nice spark off the bench for Kim English's team tonight. Pierre slips a pass to Castro, right back to Pierre. Missed it. Usman, though, couldn't get a handle on it. And Sean Miller with his hands on his head. <laughs> Carter, nice move on the baseline. I think he looks all right. Well, 16 for Carter and a foul is called. Does Devin, does Devin Carter really think that wasn't his foul? <laughs> Pretty sweet move here on the other end, though. Carter commits his first. And there's Sean Miller. Thought the ball was going the other way, and it's not. Well, Kim English's former team had a big win just down the road tonight as George Mason knocked off Dayton. Dayton ranks 16th in the country. McKnight makes the front end of the one and one. It's not an easy place to win either at Dayton. Oduro continues to watch with four fouls. Xavier Bench trying to fire up the crowd. Eight and a half to play. Carter, and a foul is called. Two shots for Devin Carter. Can't understate the toughness of Devin Carter. He looks for contact. But that's why he has shot so many foul shots this season. Since the start of last year, Devin Carter is the only player in America with at least 900 points, 100 steals, and 50 blocks. Second year with the Friars after transferring from South Carolina. And here's where he ranks in the Big East this year, the leading scorer, fourth from deep, and fourth in rebounds. He scored at least 17 in seven of the last eight games. 65-64. And Gaines reaches in, and he has three fouls. So that's number four. And that's and what Kim English is saying. He's got three. And it's one and one. I mean, that's a bad foul to get as your fourth. And they're shooting one and one. I mean, this is really makes no sense. You got to know that with three fouls. So Gaines has to come back out. Corey Floyd re-enters. There you see Oduro and Gaines with four. Barron has three. I mean, you know, people think this coaching stuff is easy. Like, Kim English didn't tell him the had three. That's why he's holding his hand. I mean, it's like, what are you doing? He doesn't have any gray hair. Yeah, he's only 35. No, he's only 35. And it's only, what, his third year as a head coach? <laughs> They're coming. Bright future. <laughs> yeah, and the grays are coming. <laughs> When he got the job, he challenged some of the players to one-on-one -on -one to see their skill level, their competitiveness, to know if he wanted to keep them. He looks like he can still play. I don't see me. I didn't see you challenging any guys oh, to one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> you now you're being funny, right? <laughs> no, I didn't. The Carter deep three. Floyd, another one-arm rebound. Trying to go back up, but he draws the foul. Corey Floyd Jr. has brought it tonight. As Swain picks up his third. Timeout on the floor, 7.57 to go. We still got a tight one here on CBS Sports Network. Welcome back as we revisit our U.S. Army keys to the game. Well, Providence limit turnovers. Not bad, eight turnovers for the game. They average about almost 12. Xavier, 10 points off those turnovers. Control the glass. They really have banged the offensive glass really hard. 
Because Xavier scored on a fast break like they always do. They did tonight so far. They've got 17 points, average about 16 and a half. Contain Josh Oduro. They've done a good job on him. It also has helped that he's been in a little bit of foul trouble to keep him off the floor. With our producer, the pit boss, Michael Pittman, our director, Chris Glass, Mike Milstein, our entire crew, Steve Lapis, Andrew Catalan with you. Another tight game in the Big East. Another banner year for this conference as we move closer to March. Oduro continues to sit in a two-point game and four fouls. You know, the league really has three teams that it's not far-fetched to think any one of those three could win the national championship. I'd say Connecticut has the best chance. But let me tell you something, what you saw from Creighton last night and Marquette, we know, I think any one of those three teams, Connecticut obviously the favorite of the three, but you can see two of those in the final four. Floyd ties the game at 66, the third tie of the night. Claude spinning on Carter, rejected. You know, interesting now, they have Devin Carter on Desmond Claude, and that was a whole different deal. He was trying to, he was trying to back him down, but Devin Carter wasn't having it. And then he gets a nice block, and I do believe there was a lot of contact going on there. Somebody's got to be following. That's the fourth block for Carter. His career high is five. Four on the shot clock, Claude with the separation, but the ball won't go down. Floyd comes away with it. Carter again slow to join the play. Floyd will bring it back out. Carter, I'll tell you, Carter is such a good defender. What a burst that was. Missed it though off glass, and here comes Xavier wanting to push. Swain in transition, missed it. Xavier bench thought maybe a goal 10, no call. Action picking up here with seven minutes to go. Castro sets a screen. Pierre around it. Lost it though. McKnight racing up ahead. Barron trying to get back. McKnight short on the shot. Swain the offensive rebound. Oliveri for three. Long rebound out to Xavier and Usman. A lot of action, no baskets. Both teams sucking wind a little bit here. Yeah. Down the stretch we come. Shot clock at five. Claude, yes. That time Carter was not on him. Claude has 20 for the ninth time this year. Oh, what, what a, a feed. Castro to Carter. Great cut and a great feed. And Kim English calls timeout. Rafael Castro, the sophomore from Dover, New Jersey, has provided some wonderful mid bench tonight. A great look here, and we're tied at 68. Providence on a 14-7 run as you look at the tournament resumes for both these programs. Providence with four quad one victories. And tonight would be a quad one victory. A huge game for Providence. Xavier tries to get some momentum coming home. And five quad one victories would put them in the top 15 in the country in terms of quad one wins. So that would be a huge accomplishment for Providence. Xavier keeps them alive. That's what they, would, this, if they win this game, they're not getting the NCAA tournament tonight, but it'll keep them a lot. And they have three quad one games remaining on their schedule after tonight. McKnight draws the foul. Pierre commits his third. All right, Lappet. What point do you bring Oduro back in? 5.45 to go. I would try, if the score stays like this, I'd try to do it till, till four. At four, I bring him in. But I mean, if, if, if all of a sudden Xavier scores five points in the next 45 seconds, he's coming in now. Again, give credit to Castro. He's done a great job in there with Oduro on the bench. And the team has, because it's really been a, I don't want to say, you didn't want to say it's a two-man team with Carter and Oduro, but 
<laughs> we talked about that last week. They had 100 points of 156 that the team yeah. scored. So they are, and they've been playing without him a lot. So give these other kids, Floyd and Pierre and Castro, give them credit for what they've done to pick the team up. Barron. Five and a half to go. Castro setting the screen. Pierre catch and shoot three is pure. Providence up by two. Pierre has quietly had a really good game. Five rebounds, three assists, 14 points. 17 to eight run. Oliveri leans into a jumper, no good. But Nanitsha pulls it back out. Oliveri open on the wing. Wow. Another miss, and Castro with his fifth rebound and draws the foul, committed by Claude. And here comes Oduro. But you see Pierre here, they give the help, and they drive and kick it. McKnight did what he was supposed to, which is help. Maybe gave a little bit too much, and Pierre was able to knock it down on the draw and kick. So Oduro went out with 14-16 on the clock. What a job Providence has done without him. And Sean Miller will call a full timeout. See the foul trouble for the Friars. Each team with a one timeout remaining. We'll take a quick 30 second break and come right back. Xavier trying to avoid a third consecutive defeat. They trail by two now with 4.51 to go. They led by seven, 61-54. Since then, Providence has scored 17 of the next 25 points. We've talked a lot about Abu Usman so far tonight, and he has a double-double, his third of the year, with 11 points and 11 rebounds. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Sean Miller couldn't ask for more from this kid tonight. He has three assists, too. Well, rapper Afro Man is here tonight, and they are playing one of his hits. But she is toasting too. Coincidentally, Lap was going to wear the same outfit tonight, but decided to put the blazer on. The CBS blazer. <laughs> I had to. Yeah. So Oduro is out there. Try and get him a touch. See if he can get back in the mix. Sends it out to Pierre. Deep three is good again. Jaden Pierre, another triple. And who was the assist? Odoro again. And John Miller told us about where the game. We know he can score down low. We don't want him picking us apart with passes. Well, he did it again. Largest lead of the night for Providence. And by Pierre. He has shot it well this year. He's tied his career high. He's got 17 points. And a turnover by Xavier. All of a sudden, you know, Xavier not getting out in transition. Half court, not as good. Barron fakes the three, dribbles in, and a foul is called on McKnight. He got him on the elbow. It'll be two free throws for Barron when we come back. What a turnaround here by the Friars. Down nine early. They now lead by five, trying to close out a quad one win on the road. Jaden Pierre has tied a career high with 17 points and three three-pointers. Yeah, I mean, five assists, three rebounds. He's knocked out two huge shots here in the last couple of minutes, these two threes, so you got to give him credit. Getting it done right now. Also had 17 at St. John's. And he's played 34 minutes tonight, so he's hardly come out for the Friars. They've needed 
that performance with so much foul trouble this evening. Here's Barron at the line, and just three for six this season from the free throw line. One out of two. 7-0 run for the Friars. I think we're going to see Desmond Claude. For those of you tuning in for the Colorado State New Mexico game, you'll be able to find it streaming free on the CBS Sports app or at cbssports.com slash cbssn as soon as it tips off. 10-10 Eastern time. Claw, there he is. Lap misses the three. And another rebound for Usman. I was thinking more of him driving it. Oliveri from the outside. Halfway down and out. Rebound Castro back in there. Really not getting anything going to the basket now, Xavier. But give Providence their defense in the half court is really starting to tighten things up. Offense, defense, substitution for Oduro, who's sitting at the scorer's table. Castro back out there. Carter finds an opening. Tough two. Nine straight points for the Friars. Claude quickly the other way in the paint off glass. Missed it. Right to Namiksha, who cleans it up. And that stops the run. 77-71. Each team with one timeout remaining. High pass. Terrible pass. Pierre gets it back. He's got to get it across quickly, and he just does. I think they should keep playing. Six points with 2.29 to go. Keep going, especially if you're playing well. Pierre, too strong off the glass, out of bounds. It'll be Providence ball. Well, you're going to see Carter here driving it. Nobody comes in to help Desmond Claude. And then on the other hand, and offensive rebound. Namiksha puts it in. There's only five seconds on the shot clock. Oduro checks back in. Oduro and Usman. Talking about class tomorrow morning. <laughs> Got to get a shot up quickly. At one, Oduro. Does he just get it off? Yes, but it's an air ball. So good defense there by Xavier. They had to have it with 2.16 to go. Now, where are they going in the half court? They've been shooting a lot of jump shots the last three, four minutes. And Oduro will come out defensively. Castro back in. Tense crowd here at the Cintas Center. But it was a good move. Came in, was putting Devin Carter on Desmond Clark. He has not done the same, but now they switched. Pierre's got him. Claude gets around Pierre, lays it off for Swain, who draws the foul. So that stops the clock and sends Dalen Swain, the freshman, to the free throw line. First foul on Castro. And this guy may be their best free throw shooter, 85% for the season. Columbus, Ohio native, two-time Ohio Division III Player of the Year. <laughs> Xavier has not been great at the line tonight. Shooting right around 60% for the season, a 74% free throw shooting team. Now Oduro back in for offense. Oh, 85% and misses them both. Colorado State New Mexico game underway, now available, streaming free on the CBS Sports app and at cbssports.com slash cbssn. We'll take you there as soon as we're done here. With 1.40 to go, Providence, a six-point advantage. Two big free throw misses by Swain. Oduro 
Harassed, had it knocked away. Carter gets it back, one on the shot clock. Carter, three won't go. Claw the rebound. Oduro nearly committed his fifth. Oh, that was close. Now McKnight. Oliveri quiet in the second half. Good look to Swain. Had it partially blocked, but Usman cleans it up. They don't have to foul. Just got to play solid defense and get a rebound. Four-point game, a minute to go. And a timeout. Devin Carter called the timeout. Final timeout for the Friars. Kim English looks to be a little surprised with 58.9 to go. All right, Adam, thank you. You saw the reaction of Kim English after Devin Carter called the timeout. Now Providence without the timeout the rest of the way. I mean, you, your last timeout, this is has got to be when you're in trouble. And he was not in trouble. 22 seconds on the shot clock. And it's Providence's arrow. So if they get tied, oh, that was close too. If they get tied up, they don't. They'll get the ball back. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Swain is out on Carter. Gaines left alone for three. No good. Oduro fighting for the rebound, but it's grabbed by Oliveri. And that was halfway down. 35 seconds to go. Oliveri sends it out to Claude. He dribbles in. Claude, good defense by Carter. Claude around Carter and connects. And Sean Miller calls his final timeout. A two-point game with 24 seconds to go. We'll be back in 30 seconds. 24.4 on the clock. What do you do if you're Xavier Lap? Well, first of all, you're gonna put the, they're going to put the full court pressure on right now. And Providence has struggled with this pressure a little bit. And as we said, no timeouts left. They could pressure. They have enough time. If they want to try a couple of traps in the backcourt, they could they could kill eight or nine seconds if they have to try to make a trap without fouling. But then they have to foul. If it gets to 15, they cannot let it go under 15 without fouling. So they got some time, and Providence has been shaky against their pressure. Let's see our game summary. Xavier plus six in the paint tonight. It'll be Floyd to inbound. And they got to get it inbounds to Gaines. Swain had it knocked away. Gaines gets it back. No now you got to foul. Yet. You got to foul. You got to foul. And there's the foul. Oh, wow. Over and back. Over and back against the Friar. Wow. Well, Lap, you called it. You said that pressure has bothered Providence tonight, and it bothered them there. Yeah, they've gotten it up a few times, but it, it, it's been shaky. Take another look. Yeah, this was right in front of us, so we didn't see it. Oh, he hopped. Wow. Yeah, that's a good call. Good call. 16 seconds left. He hopped over the line. Fans on their feet. Oh, you know they're going to Claude. Here's Claude. Claude gets to the hoop, elevates, knocked away, Gaines has it! Clean block. What defense by the Friars! Their calling card all year has been defense, and it comes up huge in the biggest moment. Ticket Gaines with help from Oduro. He missed a huge three in that corner that would have probably iced the game, but boy, this block may ice the game. The eighth block of the night for the Providence defense. That was really good. And now a one and one for Gaines. Xavier does not have a timeout. Three point game. Well, it's four point seven to go. This is a classic. Now, if he makes if he makes it and they go up four. Well, there wasn't 4.7. They ran oh, time yeah. on the free throw. Yeah. So they should put a little 5. bit 5.1 is yes. what it should be. My, my point being, okay, they're up three now. If they make this, then they don't have to worry about anything. Just don't foul. If they miss this one, I think they should foul. This is a perfect situation to foul. So you don't give up the three to tie the game. 
It would be two shots, as you see. Some time came off. They'll put it back to 5.1. So one more for ticket gains, trying to ice it and send Sean Miller and the Musketeers to their third straight loss. Gaines three for three at the line tonight. Makes it a four point game. Now you just, that's it, just don't foul. McKnight puts up a three, no foul, and that will do it. What a win on the road for the Providence Friars. It's a quad one win, their fifth of the year. And Kim English's team wins its third straight and now four of the last five. Providence goes to nine and seven in the Big East, while Xavier falls to seven and eight. For Steve Lapis and our entire crew, I'm Andrew Catalan. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. After the break, we'll send it out to the pit. A big one in the Mountain West, Colorado State at New Mexico. So long from Cincinnati.